Hello and welcome to Catching Up with the Backs, episode number five. Very special guest today, just named uh, captain of the Salmon Arm Silverbacks for the 2020-21 season, Hunter Sansbury. Hunter, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me out here. It's great to be here and uh, just want to talk, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, Let's. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, obviously, it's been a, a long off-season, a yeah. different kind of off-season. Yeah. Let's start with the captaincy though. It is fresh news. Um, what does it mean to you to be named the captain of the Salmon Arm Silverbacks? Yeah, I mean, um, first of all, it's an honor to be a captain for this team. You know, came in last year as a 19-year-old uh, and, you know, didn't really know what to expect. Being from California, you know, going up to Canada, you know, there's a lot of uh, culture changes and stuff like that. Um, so to be named captain is just an honor, you know, and um, just very proud to wear it and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a letter on my jersey. I think last year, Akito Hiroshi said it best, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a letter on my jersey. I'm still gonna bring in the same blue collar attitude. Um, I'm still gonna treat each practice, you know, like I'm trying to make the team, I'm gonna treat each game like it's my last, so, yeah. Can you talk to me about, um, I know you just said nothing, it is just a letter, but in terms of like a style, a leadership style, how would you describe kind of how you are off the ice? Yeah. Um, I think first and foremost, I lead by my actions. I think that's, you know, I think people tend to follow that. If you, you know, talk more than you actually show, I think, you know, people can see that. And um, I think just being a genuine person, you gotta just be real with people and be honest with people and people will see that and people are able to point out if you're not being genuine about certain things like that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, before we get into last season, um, what it was like for you this summer. Um, so you're from just outside Los Angeles in Lamita. Yeah. Um, what was the COVID situation kind of like when you first got back? Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It kind of felt like a movie, honestly. Um, <laughs> just like stores were like, you know, there was nothing in stores, like no toilet paper, no, you know, hand sanitizer or whatever it may be. Um, places were shut down, you couldn't really go anywhere. So um, it was crazy and I think we're starting to pick it back up, but you know, um, it was definitely something that I'll never forget. So did things gradually change over time or are we talking over, like in July and August, is it still kind of iffy? Um, it's still pretty iffy. I mean, you can't really go into restaurants and sit down and eat. Um, and you know, you pretty much gotta wear a mask everywhere you go. And like to go into stores, you gotta, so much has to come out for you to go in. So it's definitely, um, mm -hmm. Definitely a big change. <laughs> um, so, how did that affect what would normally be an off season for you, like training wise? <laughs> Probably put, um, change some things. Yeah, definitely a lot of garage workouts. Definitely okay. doing a lot of you know push ups, sit ups. You know, just kind of like those kind of workouts. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, just staying active in the backyard. I had a net back there and stick handling area, so just try to keep up on that as well. So when you weren't training, um, what types of things were you able to do to you know keep yourself entertained? Yeah, um, I definitely got to spend a lot of time with my mom and dad, which was very nice, and um, you know just watch movies with them, hang out with them, and um, we actually started a new tradition where we just started going on walks every night. So nice. you know uh, that's something that I really enjoy, and hopefully we continue that because uh, you know it's just a time where I get to talk to my mom and dad, just as, you know as a kid and as a son, and you know just get to talk about whatever it comes up, but you know, something that I really cherish during that time. Were there outdoor sports like golf or other things that were allowed that you did a lot? Uh, yeah, golf was a lot. I don't know if I was too good at it, but um, definitely played some golf with some guys. And uh, yeah, pretty much just golf was like the one that most people were playing at the time. Yeah, perfect. Let's talk about last season. Um, obviously it came to an abrupt end and uh, it was not very fun for the whole league, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially you guys uh, getting ready to play trail. Let's go back to the beginning though. You mentioned how you came in as a 19 year old. It was your first season, didn't really know what to expect. Um, how was the adjustment like for you? Yeah, so coming from the New England Prep League, I thought it actually prepared me pretty well. Um, New England Prep League is a pretty physical league and also pretty fast. So I thought coming in, you know, um, I kept those same attributes and, you know, I thought um, definitely had to make some adjustments with the quickness of the league and stuff like that. But as for the physicality, I thought I transferred pretty well. Uh, yeah, so the speed, what, what was, was it as fast as you thought it might be? Was it faster? That's kind of the BCHL, yeah. what it's known for. It was definitely, as fa it's very fast. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of skilled guys who are very quick, so you got to find a way to keep up. And um, yeah, it's definitely very fast. League. Was there a moment, um, it doesn't have to be one particular moment, but maybe a point in the season where you kind of got more comfortable and felt like this is where I, where I need to be? Um, I would probably say probably after Christmas break when we started picking it back up as a team. Okay. I thought everyone was rolling and I thought, you know, 
when the team's rolling, everyone else individually is rolling. So I felt like we were just in a more comfortable spot after, you know, we came back strong and um, just sort of had everyone's back and everyone was on the same page. Um, is there a favorite moment from last season? <laughs> um, I think as a team when we uh, first playoff series. Tries to tie up to Paulo. Hiroshi can't get it out. It's held in. Lindsay across to McDonald. He couldn't get the pass cleanly. Fires one on goal. It's blocked. Bennett will clear it out. That will do it. The Salmon Arms Silverbacks have swept the Victoria Grizzlies. They win their first playoff series since 2010-2011 as they hold on for the 3-2 victory. That was, uh, that was special and something I'll never forget as a team. Just... Uh you know, winning a playoff series for nothing and just, you know, having that, that swagger and that, you know, that camaraderie in the locker room was something special and something I'll never forget. What do you think factored into you guys beating them in four straight games? Some games were, were very close, yeah. yet you won four in a row. I think at the end of the day, we just all bought in and we knew that at the end of the day, if we all pulled together in the same direction, we knew that we had something special in the locker room. So, um, I think as a team, you know, when we all come together and we all pull in the same direction, there's nothing we can't do. So I think that's what really got us through the series. Um, let's talk a little bit about before the Silverbacks. <laughs> and we're going to go way back to when you were yeah. a kid. Uh, of course, growing up outside LA, ice hockey. Yeah. <laughs> there doesn't happen for that many kids. Yeah. So why, what drew you to the sport? Um, so my dad actually grew up playing roller on quads. So he uh, grew up playing roller hockey and uh, didn't turn to ice till 35 actually, turned to ice hockey. So uh, wow. yeah, he actually got me into it. And then ever since I started picking up the stick, I just fell in love with it. And um, I think the physicality actually is what sort of drew my attention the most. Uh, I just, ever since I started playing, I was, even when we were in mites, I was always a kid who was like pushing kids after the whistle and stuff <laughs> like that. And uh, you know, so I think that's what really drew me to the game. So question then, where does that physicality aggressiveness where does it come from like why <laughs> I just I guess it's just like a, not a protection thing but just like I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that my the other team knows that I got my teammates back and that no matter what happens I'm gonna do whatever I can just to fight for them so I think that's just something that you know comes naturally I, I ever since I started playing it's just something that I've always just if something if someone's coming through my way I'm gonna make sure they know that I'm there and they're not getting through so Awesome. Um, can you kind of take me through the path um, of what led you to go to gunnery prep? What was kind of, you played at yeah. what age and then when did you go off? Yeah, so after my 15 year in uh, LA, I played for the Junior Kings. Um, my family and I were looking for prep schools and uh, we were looking at a couple schools um, and it was probably a very hard decision for my mom and dad, especially my mom, um, you know, losing their baby and, you know, losing their kid to uh, going out east. Um, but we knew it was the best for me because we knew that going out east, you know, you get a different exposure and, you know, we felt that not only as a hockey player, but also as a student to develop. Um, so after I toured the gunner, I just sort of fell in love with it. And um, it was just something that there's a certain feeling you get at, you know, a certain place that you can't really describe. It's just like that hometown feeling that's somewhere you can be comfortable and, you know, just sort of feel like you can see yourself strive there. So, um, yeah, so then I chose gunnery and then the rest is history. <laughs> Were there other schools though that you were considering and looking at or was it kind of just kinda... Yeah, there it was between them and another school and it was pretty much 50-50 and oh. um, at the end of the day the coach from Gunnery called me and said we need a decision and then that was I made my decision and then yeah. So you went to Gunnery, why did you choose the Salmon Arm Silverbacks, how did that happen? Um, yeah, so ever since I was growing up I always wanted to play in the BCHL, um, being a West Coast kid, you know, just being in the Vancouver area and stuff like that. Um, I also like the style of play, you know, the, the offensive way and then also just the speed of the game and stuff like that, so it just kind of drew my attention right away. Perfect. Um, do you think that's the way of the future of the game of hockey? Do you think it's paving the way, speed and skill? Uh, it certainly seems like that. Yeah. You know, nowadays you can have defensemen who are 5'9", five, 5'10", five, like Tory Crude, and um, there's definitely, you know, smaller guys are able to play um, just because it's not as, you know, physical or as hard-nosed as it once was. But, um, yeah, I think it's definitely going in that direction. Uh, let's talk, we'll go back to the BCHL. Um, of the all the teams in the league, is there a team that you most enjoyed playing last season? Penticton, easily. Okay, so a lot of players say that. Yeah. Why is it the V's? Um, they just, you know, they got, they, there's just something about them that, you know, uh, I think our team just 
likes to go after and uh, just you can see by the games you know there's a lot of animosity out there and it's For just sure. um, going to that rink with all those fans you just want to do everything you can to just you know beat them. <laughs> uh, is there a building like an away building that nice rink that you prefer to play or like to play? Um, probably Penticton again. Just okay. <laughs> I know I'm playing them so that's probably why I like going there. Yeah, It doesn't matter the building just the opponent yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the coaching staff a little bit. Um, there was a coaching change last season. Uh, Tyler Shattuck taking over uh, head coaching duties. Um, what do you think when that coaching change happened how do you think uh, that adjustment went for you guys and for the coaching staff and what do they bring to the table? Um, I thought as a team we handled it really well. I thought we handled it with class and um, I think everyone knew the circumstances and we all sort of pulled in the same direction like I said before um, and I think the coaching staff is you know just like they do everything they can for us and just like us they they what they expect out of us they're going to do for us as well so as hard as they expect us to work they're doing the exact same um, and they're willing to go to bat for us and you know they have so much passion for this team and so much pride and it just oozes out of them so um, when you have that leadership from the coaching staff and you know that they're willing to do whatever it takes to make sure this friend this uh, this team wins you know that's that's huge for our team because you know they they lead us so it, by having them you know have that much passion and pride for this team is everything. Now a lot of off-season changes um, for the roster. Yep. Um, as the captain coming in as one of the uh, one of several returners, how do you kind of approach that with so many new faces? Yeah. How how is that something? How are you going to approach it? Um, I think just setting the tone right away, obviously. Um, and I can't do it by myself. I need my teammates, obviously. Like it's not. I'm not the only leader on the team. We have 23 leaders on the team. So, um, also just having the returning guys. You know, we all get. The, we've had a couple Zoom calls together, and we all just kind of have the same mindset. You know, um, so I think just setting the tone right off the bat from camp is key. Uh, now, how much have you been able to skate? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think training camp might be like? Um, I've actually been able to skate a lot. Okay. Um, so. Um, but I think guys are now being able to skate, and you know, I think guys are starting to. Um, be able to go in the gym and stuff like that. So I think camp's gonna be good. Um, definitely, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some kinks here and there, but I think for the most part, camp will be good. And is the expectation right off the bat, even though COVID happened, it's it's got to be fast paced, yeah. like come Monday. Yeah, yeah. definitely, it's got to be full speed, you know, full tempo, season like, you know. So yeah, awesome. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, not the BCHL. And let's talk about the NHL a little bit. Um, of course, the, uh, the playoffs are happening in the two bubble cities, Edmonton and Toronto. Yeah. Uh, first off, who is your NHL team and your favorite player? Uh, well, the LA Kings are my team, so unfortunately they're not in either bubble, but um, my, uh, my favorite player is Drew Doughty. Okay. So, the Kings are not in. Are you cheering for anyone in particular? Uh, I would Vegas. I think okay. Vegas has the best chance. Um, I just like their team, obviously, and Vegas is pretty close to home, so that's probably my team I'm rooting for. Do you, are they always kind of your second team if LA is ever not in? Or um, just well, normally Detroit is my second team, okay. um, but since they're also not in the bubble, um, yeah, Vegas <laughs> is probably right there. Okay. Is there a team that surprised you the most in, in a good way who maybe you didn't think was as good as they're playing? Um, I thought Vancouver did. I thought I was, with all the young guys they have and all the, I think they have really good D. Um, I thought, I was saying like in a couple of years, I thought they'd be in the Stanley Cup, but mm -hmm. I mean, the way they're going this year, I mean, they could potentially make it this year. Um, yeah. They have a lot of good young guys and I think Markstrom's playing really well too. He's one of the best goalies right now, so. Yeah, uh, do you think they will end up beating Vegas? Can we get a prediction? Um, I think Vegas will take it. I don't know, it okay. might be like a six or seven game series, but I, I think Vegas will take it just because they have probably a little bit more uh, just experience on the team, and uh, okay. yeah, so I think Vegas will take it. Um, Who? Wh why do you think they're a strong team? Is it their forwards are deep? Is it goaltending? Why do you think? Um, I think they have two strong goalies. So I mean, at the end of the day, if one's not having a, a good night, you can always pop in the other one who's just as hot or just as good. Um, I think they also have a really solid decor. Um, okay. Guys like Theodore Martinez and Schmidt and McNabb and all those guys. I think you know. It, it just you know from the back end from goalie standpoint they're really good and offensively they got a lot of firepower as well with Carlson, Marchessault, Pacioretty, Stone, you know all those guys so I, I just think they're deep and uh, have a lot of depth. Uh, you said Doughty's your favorite player is he someone you try and emulate on the ice are there other players you try? Yeah to I definitely with? try to model my game after Judy. I just kind of having like that and chippiness and you know just not taking anything from anyone but also being able to have that offensive touch as well. Uh, there have been some rumblings that maybe he's not the player that he used to be. What do you what do you say to that? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he's still 
one of the, I mean, my, in my opinion, one of the best defensemen in the league. And um, I think for all he's done for LA, you know, I think that speaks volumes about him. So I, I still think he's Drew Doughty, but that might be a little biased just because, you know, he's my favorite player, but okay. I still think he's Drew Doughty. Uh, are you ready for some, some rapid fire questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, okay, first, uh, the number one thing that you did when quarantine was uh, a thing? <laughs> uh, stick handle in my garage. I did that every night, so definitely okay. that. So every night for how long? Uh, I'd be in there for like hours at a time, so like an hour, hour, two hours, you know, whatever it was, I was in there just stick handling away. Okay, that reminds me of something I did not ask, so we're going to go away from rapid yeah. fire. You're shocked. How did you, um, is it something you've just worked on? Do you attribute someone for helping you with your shot? How did you get it? Because it is a bomb. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's just developed in the backyard, I think. And okay. going, I mean, in the summer, I would go to a stick time like all day, just going there, you know, just shooting pucks. And I think that's just repetition and sort of getting it down now. And um, yeah, it's just repetition and practicing over and over and over again. In terms of the mechanics, is there a key to a hard shot? Um, you don't need to be the biggest guy to have a hard shot, so I, I think that's number one. Um, it's just sort of like your hand placement and being able to put flex on your stick. If you can make that stick flex and whip, then I mean, it's going to fly. So I think just having that top hand out and that bottom hand down and just being able to, that uh, push and pull sort of technique is key. Now, um, shot or otherwise, any other part of your game, is there any coaches who along the way, whether it was minor hockey or gunnery or here, any coaches who really, really helped you develop into the player that you are today? Yeah, um, I played Junior Kings in Mike to uh, Squirt, and uh, Tomas Kapusta was one of, okay. was the coach then. He, uh, I honestly don't think I'd, I'd be where I am without him. He sort of, you know, took a chance on me in Might. Um, didn't know if I was gonna make the team or not, but I went in there, you know, and I tried out, and he took a chance on me, and um, yeah, he uh, he uh, really helped me out and sort of developed me as an all-around player and just like with everything. So yeah. And so Squirt and Might is just for the for the fans. How old? <laughs> uh, yeah, so Might is like seven to eight, and then Squirt is like nine and ten. Okay. So, so we're we're going back. Yeah, we're going yeah. back. Uh, back to the rapid fire as I uh, pull up a couple more questions. Uh, can you take us through uh, any sort of home workout routine? You said you're in your garage. What kind of did you do? Yeah, so uh, I'd be in there. I would shoot pucks and then go in the garage, and I would do like a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, um, some planks, obviously, and then I had 25-pound dumbbells, so okay. some arm workouts and then stick handle. Uh, did you have a go-to uh, television show that you binge that you really enjoyed? Um, yeah, so my family and I watched like every single Andy Griffith show. That was, okay. just, that was just something we watched. Um, yeah, so we watched that every day. Okay. Uh, movie? Is there a movie that you watched you really enjoyed? Um, I, uh, I saw Inception, which was, okay. that's a really hard movie to grasp to all together, up. but uh, yeah, 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 I thought it was really good. So wait, for the first time? Yeah, first oh, time. So I might have to go back and watch it again just to see yeah, if yeah. I miss anything. It, sometimes it's better on repeat yeah, watches. Yeah. Uh, video game guy, do you have a go-to video game? Yeah, uh, NHL and NBA, okay. more of a sports guy. Game. Okay. Um, is NHL? Oh yeah, it is. They announced the cover after, yeah. didn't they? So NHL 21 will be a thing. Yeah. And yeah. are you going to get it right away? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm assuming guys on the team yeah. play show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have a? Uh, did you have a go-to takeout order or takeout type of food? Um, probably Chipotle. We would go work out, and then we, my, me and my buddy, would go grab it. So probably okay. Chipotle. And you wish Chipotle was here. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a go-to snack food? Um, not. Not particularly, no. no. Just whatever is in the cover or in the fridge, basically. Yeah. Okay. After a workout, though, let's say it's not Chipotle. Is there anything like energy-wise that you would? Um, probably uh, pokey, which I don't know if they have that here, but. Oh, cool. those are like those sticks that are like no. It's what like a fun? it's like a sushi bowl unraveled. So. Okay. Never probably, mind. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what about haircuts during COVID? Um, I see, clearly it looks like you've, you've had one. Yeah. Was it hard to... to... Uh, my mom's big on having me look clean and having my hair short. Um, okay. So is my dad. So uh, it was growing out and then I decided to get a haircut. But uh, yeah. Okay. How long was it before you kind of got it cut? You know? Well, I still had my playoff haircut. So my sides were short, but my back was long. So it's just <sighs> my back that was getting pretty long. Okay. Um, if, uh, let's say, back in LA, um, if COVID were not a thing, what would be the first activity that you would want to do that you really miss? Uh, just go to the rink. Yeah. Without, yeah. without restrictions. Yeah. yeah, just go to the rink and uh, be able to skate and just, you know, be there all day, basically. Yeah, all hockey, hockey. Yeah. Um, lastly, the, 
number one thing you're most looking forward to in your final season in the BCHL, what would that be? Uh, winning a championship. I think uh, all the guys we have coming back and the guys we have coming in, uh, I think we all have the same mindset and that's winning a championship. And that's number one in our minds and uh, that's what I'm really looking forward to with this team. Perfect. Thanks so much yeah. and we'll catch up with you yeah. throughout training camp. Thank you.